Hey there and welcome to the Learning Forward podcast season 10 episode 18. I am Anvisha your meet and greet podcast host at My Good School and dreaming with excitement as we are here for yet another beautiful conversation. Many of us deem science and spirituality as separate realities. But once we observe, ponder and implore upon the fine lines, we discover that science and Vedanta share a common ground. The interconnection of science with Vedanta can bring about a dramatic change in the way we perceive and understand our universe. In our podcast, we have Mr. Jayant Kapetkar. He graduated from IIT Kanpur and has worked in India, Nepal, Spain, Australia and the USA. He is the founder and CEO of Stam Interactive Solutions. For over 15 years, Jayant attended Vedanta classes with dedication and passion at the Asha Bodha Center in New Jersey. This experience was life-changing. Accumulating this knowledge and going deeper into the subject has become the main focus of his life. And during this exciting journey, he has seen many connections between science and Vedanta. In 2014, he began writing essays to show us how the teachings of Vedanta can help us add a new dimension to the scientific understanding of the universe. And many people who followed his essays suggested that he should compile them in a book. And thus was born Science Meets Vedanta. We welcome you, sir. Would you like to speak a few words about your life, your book, and your discovery of how science meets Vedanta? Thank you, and thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this conversation. Uh, my life, uh, uh, basically, till uh, 2004, I led a very typical life. I went to school, I went to college, and I've obviously worked around the world. I was very fortunate to have in my education one of the best institutes in India, but in but in 2004, everything changed for me. I was very fortunate uh, to attend the my classes of Vedanta at the Ashabodha Center, and that started my spiritual journey. I attended one class. Uh, before that, I was pretty hesitant. I was wondering what will I learn there? What will it be just some sort of a. a, a knowledge which which i will not gain there but i attended one class of uh, under my teacher it changed me completely and i became a passionate student of vedanta i used to do a lot of reading of uh, all sorts of reading i used to do but then i gave up everything i only wanted to learn more about vedanta because vedanta teaches you to understand your innermost core basically and the more i started understanding the inner core I felt that I need to learn more about it so I started reading more and another saint uh, who came into my life not my life he's already dead but he was a uh, uh, Ramana Maharshi Ramana Maharshi uh, when I started reading about it him I knew uh, this is the way and what his teaching was what I should assimilate by this knowledge and along being being an engineer I could see a lot of connections between science and Vedanta and so 2014 I started writing articles and when I was writing articles I think that was the best thing which happened to me me well, once you start writing you have always have some doubts before you start writing those doubts have to be resolved and some inspiration was coming from within where these doubts were being clarified basically and once I got that doubt clarified so I always felt I knew more about the subject after writing before I knew before I started writing and then new subjects started coming up and I started writing more and more and then I thought maybe I should publish a book as many people requested me to do that and what a year back I published the book and now my main focus is to uh, uh, share my knowledge what I've gained uh, with everyone especially the scientific community because science is stuck in many ways they're trying to struggle they're trying to find the theory of everything they're trying to find out uh, how, how sp- uh, space is created why space is expanding and they have stuck in many areas sort of thing and and they will not understand uh, those issues unless they don't understand themselves basically the conclusion i've come is that this subject 
is most important the subject which is your inner core that's the most important thing once you understand the subject you will understand the objects outside the objects outside are all dependent on the inner core which is the subject within you sort of thing so that's my mission now is trying to share this knowledge with as many people as possible and hopefully i could convert people and make them see uh, what's the right direction for science to take because they need to understand their innermost core basically right sir absolutely okay. it is yeah. lovely having you here sir thank you so one thing deeply discussed in vedanta is observing the observed and it is in simple terms to distance away from our thoughts never get yes. attached to an object until that extent even observe without connecting so so what is this phenomenon exactly and how can an individual attain it yes it is very confusing because you sometimes you have two personalities within you one is your innermost core and the other one is your ego basically so people get confused that there are two different identities you have one is your innermost core which you need to discover and one is your ego which you are living with that day to day but you need to understand that the ego is really another thought basically and ego comes about it's your uh, it's been what you can say that if once your real self is covered with ignorance the ego pops out basically so when you clear up your uh, what your uh, ignorance the ego disappears and only thing left is your real self basically so when you say observing the observer there is a uh, there is a sakshi within you uh, which is uh, uh, there are two things one is the ego and one is the real self basically so now you can ask me who's really watching is it the real self watching or is it the ego watching when you see the world outside who's watching the thing is that right now you are living in the world of ego basically so ego is watching everything because you have forgotten your innermost core the day you remove the ignorance and then your innermost core will be watching when once you watch your with your innermost core in fact there will be no universe at all because it's uh, universe is all made of ignorance basically everything in the universe is made of ignorance that doesn't mean that if you um, achieve self realization in this birth uh, the universe will disappear no your body is still there your mind is still there person who self realized but only thing he is watching his body also the body is like a robot for him it is functioning it is getting up it's hungry it goes and eats it does its own thing dep- uh, depending on his uh, karmas and uh, so once the body dies the, uh, the the person doesn't get reborn basically right sir absolutely so being a graduate from iit to setting up your own company where the courses you developed won the best new product in the las vegas exhibition to now whilst still embarking on a spiritual journey which experience gave you the happiest memory sir um the spiritual journey that's obviously there and uh, yes, uh, obviously when i was growing up i was starting my company that did give me uh, a pleasure to start the company and doing something innovative but once you start uh, discovering your innermost core because the source of happiness is your innermost core the your innermost core is where the uh, happiness lies basically and uh, when or you get happiness when do you get happiness in your life when there have no thoughts basically when you have a desire uh, the desire is troubling you and you don't uh, that the desire is troubling you but once you achieve that desire uh, you get that desire what you wanted your thoughts subside and when the thoughts are not there the happiness is shining through and that's the time you feel happy when there are no thoughts basically so the goal is to have less number of thoughts the more less number of thoughts you have the ha- happiness has a chance to go through basically when you lead a very active life and uh, uh, your mind is full of jumbled up the chances of happiness coming through becomes difficult sort of things happiness is directly within you basically and you need to find and understand that you there's no happiness in the objects basically because you might say ice cream gives you happiness or chocolate gives you happiness but you know that chocolate doesn't give you happiness if you eat one chocolate yes you feel happy if you eat 10 chocolates the happiness is gone from the chocolate no so there's no ingredient of happiness within the chocolate as such you know it just comes there because you have satisfied the desire and when you satisfy the desire your thoughts are not there and the happiness shines through from your inside and you feel happy so the happiness is within you the happiness is not in the objects basically that's one thing which you have to realize and that's one thing i've understood and that's the main core 
message of Vedanta. The science and all that which I'm trying to tell you is also an offshoot. But the main core of Vedanta is to how to lead happy life and you would find the happiness within you, not in the objects basically. Right, sir. Well, thank you so much, sir. I will now invite Rishona and Shambhavi to ask a few questions. Okay. Rishona, you may ask your question. Thank you, Ambesha. Good evening, sir. It has been a pleasure being alongside you today and listening to you and your experiences. In our meeting on Saturday, you mentioned that a couple of years ago, it was not in your wildest dreams to be an author. As you mentioned, you became an author rather out of the blue as it was not what you had planned. How did you feel on this unexpected journey and what do you think becoming an author has affected you in any way? Moreover, why did you decide to take the path of Vedanta and how did you like it? Author, I could, I never thought in my life, if you'd asked me 20 years back, are you going to be an author? I would have laughed at you. I said, that's just impossible sort of thing. And the life is such, you know, this, I started uh, in 2014 when I started writing, I started enjoying writing basically. And I felt that I could write uh, reasonably well. Uh, although my English is not that great, I used to always I need a copy editor to copy uh, correct my English. Uh, but uh, I started enjoying my uh, writing, and when I started writing, it became part of me basically. And now, if I don't write, I feel uncomfortable. I'm still writing these days. Every I try to write a few hours or at least a few a few hours every week. I'm writing new articles and new concepts which come to my mind. I'm trying to do that. And writing is a thing which I think for everyone, if you really want to learn about yourself, writing is most important. Because writing is something that comes from within, basically. It has to, you get inspirations from within. Because when you start writing, when I now when I read my own articles, I sometimes wonder, did I write all that? Then I see, then I realize I did write all that, basically. I, I keep wondering, will I be able to write the same thing I can write now? Because something is coming from within. The inspiration is from within, basically, and and that's what really got me get get me through. And I enjoy doing that because the and uh, the inspiration, your inner core, is what is the knowledge is within the inner core, and that is coming out basically. And that's what I try to. Uh, I like that, and I enjoy that uh, feeling of uh, uh, writing from that point of view. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out time to answer my question. And now I'll hand it over to Shambhavi to ask her questions. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. So I want to ask that if ever in life, like I want to keep my calm and I want to stay in my happy, sadvic state and like listen to my uh, the voice of my higher self, of my inner core. And I find that someone else is placing their ego in between me and my happiness. So how can I deal with that? Like, how can I keep myself looking straight at one point and like telling myself that I am aware that this person is coming from a low vibration and so I should not listen to that. Can you tell me how to maintain that state? It's not uh, easy sometimes. It's not, uh, I can ideally talk to you about it, but uh, when you want to implement it, it's not very easy. What sometimes happens is that um, um, you may be understanding that you're not too supposed to get angry, but your body-mind complex has got its own personality, basically. It has its own plus and minus points. Yes. And sometimes the body and mind reacts uh, automatically. And you are at, at the back wondering why the body-mind reacted sort of thing. Because they call it uh, the body-mind vasanas, they call it. Vasanas are part of your inner core. Not your inner core, your soul, basically. Part of your soul is the personality within the soul, basically. And sometimes the soul uh, reacts automatically without the ego. That It takes over the ego and the, uh, the ego doesn't want it to uh, uh, react that way, but the body and mind takes it over sort of thing, you know, and it reacts basically. But uh, the question is then the, the ego uh, should be able to control it afterwards. Maybe initial stage, uh, it may require a lot of practice to not to get angry every time, but it's not easy sometimes because some things you might uh, just you get hurt and you start abusing or you might do whatever it is sort of thing, you know. So it's not easy, but uh, you need to control your mind basically. You have to make your mind calm. You have to go back to inner core. You have to do meditation and you have to do uh, uh, all that sort of things to calm your mind basically. But the vasanas which are part uh, of the personality, uh, they will react the way it has to react sort of thing, you know. 
but then the ego should come and uh, take charge of it because the ego has been trained uh, to do the right things it should be able to control its sort of thing so it's not an easy subject because it's a very fine line because you might ideally say that you should do this you should do that but in reality uh, things may not turn that way because the the ego and mind has got its own uh, vasanas it is reacting to the vasanas basically hmm. does that answer your question uh yes sir so uh, i just want you to clarify that is it like this that if i have like any regret that i could have done something else to improve the situation or why does this happen to me why like, what did i do to deserve this person to say this to me so in that case uh, are the answers right within me like do i need to get myself uh, like i do i need to make myself aware of those yes truthful statements yeah the, for those sort of statements i think uh, you got to say that you are uh, a different you are not the ego because those things have been done by the ego basically because a lot of people complain why did i fall sick why did i do this why is this happening to me why all the downside is coming to me but uh, that is one thing which is you are not part of that you are your self real self is the observer of those sort of things you're not the uh, undergoing those suffering basically you know because you are not Uh, the uh, the body mind complex because someone who's very sick for example is hurt when he goes to sleep he doesn't feel the hurt what does that mean it means the hurt doesn't belong to the person it belongs to the body basically and you are not the body basically if you need to disassociate yourself from the body mind complex once you start doing that you will be an observer of everything around you sometimes the body may behave properly improperly but you have to be the observer of that sort of thing uh, so i basically need to practice thinking like that right yes you got to do thinking that you are the observer basically every time every just they call it um, mindful awareness sort of thing you know you have to be mindful yes. of everything you know yeah, once you are mindful awareness when you are watching the, uh, the thoughts you are watching your actions basically once you can do that in a regular basis you will be watching everything so that will calm your mind down completely and when your mind is calm it can accept a lot of things from outside sort of thing yes thank you thank you sir thank you so much for asking uh, answering my question thank you shanvi thank you rishona and thank you jayan sir for being here with us today okay so there is a lot to learn and there is now a lot to reinforce science is looking for reality out there while vedanta is looking for reality inside you that is in here but there is only one reality one purpose and one universe science and vedanta are the same reality adding multiple dimensions to our unique universe We come to the end of our podcast. Comment below and let us know if you like the podcast. If you want to be a part of similar podcasts, join us. We hope to meet you soon again. Thank you. You've been amazing.